Hi everyone, my name is King Ivy and this is an ACC 626 workshop on journal entry testing. So we have three data files, the journal entry testing population, the trial balances, and the user listing. Our objectives for today are to reconcile the journal entries to the trial balance to ensure completeness, and then as well assign a risk profile to the journal entries based off the following criteria, whether or not it contains one of these three words, a fraud, CFO, miscellaneous, uh, whether or not the journal entry is posted by the CFO, assign a score of three, otherwise assign a score of one, and then if the journal entry was posted within five days before or after the quarter uh, and is an income statement item, assign a score of three, otherwise assign a score of one. So let's get started. First thing we need to do is import the data. So make sure your data is in the source folder. I'm going to do this rather quickly because uh, hopefully at this point you've watched the uh, intro idea session. Nope, just, okay, I spelled that one wrong. Let me just quickly respell this table. Okay, perfect. So the first thing we should do, I'm sure you guys are all thinking this, field statistics. Okay, so it looks like it's net to zero, which is good. Your journal entry should net to zero. And then as well, there are 260 records in my data. Let's ensure that's correct. There are 261 rows plus the header makes 260. And then let's go to the trial balance. Okay, so we see our credits match, beginning and ending zero. There's 21 records and yeah, that's the case. Perfect. Uh, but what we also see is that we have this, these total rows, so we actually don't want those. So I'm going to quickly, what I'm going to quickly do is do a direct extract. And then here we can just say, um, we just want to go to 19. And we'll call this trial balance. And then I don't want this last column. There you go. And now we'll just double check the field statistics here. Okay, looks good. Perfect. So now, first thing we want to do is reconcile the journal entries. And the way we're going to reconcile the journal entries is actually perform a summarization on, in this case, the account number and uh, the amount. Normally, we would include the company, but in this case, there is not included. So we're going to call this account sum. And I'm going to let that run. Perfect. So now we have the amount per journal entry, uh, per account. And then now we're going to reconcile it with the trial balance. So let's pick the trial balance. Uh, in this case, I'll include all those fields good. And we're going to match it based on the account number. Again, OK, I'm going to have to convert my account number, actually. Um, again, if uh, you have a company ID, then you should join it based off a of company ID as well. So I just had to convert my uh, my account number to a character so that I could actually join them because they will have to be they have, will have to be the same type. I'm going to include both count all records from both files, and then here I'm going to call this tbje join. Okay, perfect. Next thing we want to do is to calculate the variance and the variance for income statement items. Let's actually first create a new account field. So you'll see this account number is sometimes blank. So let's create a new one. 
let's call this text account let's make this uh, character like 10 and pretty simply we're just gonna go if um, is blank count number equals one well or equals zero that means it is not blank make it a count number otherwise make it a count which is the other their file perfect so you can see here that works perfectly and now what we're gonna do here is we're gonna create a we're gonna calculate our variance and we know that if it's an income statement item so we're gonna go if tax account actually let's go uh, val tax account Uh, is greater than 4,000 or greater than or equal to 4,000 then we simply just take the ending balance minus because it's the income statement item minus uh, the account sum amount sum otherwise what we're going to do here is we're going to take the ending minus the beginning because it's a balance sheet minus the amount sum so for both of them, you're taking the change that occurred in the year, but income statement items always zero at the end of the year because they go to retain earnings, while balance sheet items obviously carry forward because the balance is carry forward, hence the name. So we'll see here, we have some variances. They're $50,000, so that's something that we can go ask client and explore. But besides that, we are fully reconciled. That's something that you should ask before you proceed, but we're gonna set up our scripts so that uh, we can analyze them further. First thing you wanna do is identify if any of these words are exist in the data. So the data that we're looking at, the description that we're gonna look at is we're gonna look at journal description and line description. So the way I'm gonna do this, a couple ways you can approach this. In this case, I'm gonna to try to create extracts for each of my uh, samples. So I'm gonna call this S1. And essentially what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna say, I'm going to use this function called is any is any I, which is basically is the description. Actually, let me just pull it up. It'll make more sense if I do that. So here, basically what it looks for is you use the shorter string in this case, or not the shorter string necessarily, but should be the shorter string. Look for this word within the field supplier in this case. And it's going to either give you the zero or one, one, if um actually okay i should do this i should do an if first and i'm gonna say and is any i uh, means that it doesn't care about the capitalization of the word so i'm gonna go description plus line description and then i'm essentially just gonna do this three times and add up the score in this case miscellaneous uh cfo and fraud and essentially I'm going to add these three together so I'm going to put a bracket beginning end and I said if this is greater than zero which means that it's flagged at least one of the words so if you think about the extremes that uh, the one extreme is that no none of these words are flagged in the description the other extreme is all three so anything above zero means that at least one was flagged and we're going to give a score of three. Otherwise, we're going to give a score of one. Actually, no, no, we're not going to give it a score. Uh, I'm just going to go. No, actually, let's just do this. Basically, uh, so I'm thinking about actually creating the formula later on. So we're going to go, we're going to add up all these three. And I'm going to say, is it greater than zero? Which means that these ones uh, are greater than zero. Let's create this new table. So within this one, you'll see CFO, miscellaneous. There's no fraud ones. So basically what I said, what I did was I took those three fields, took, took those three different words, looked in the fields, and if they contained at least one time, occurred at least one time, then export this to the data. When we do, we'll do some of the if stuff um, later on when we join it back to, to the data. 
So here, next one's pretty simple. We're gonna export them if the juror, if the CFO posted it. So we're gonna go here, not here. We're gonna go direct, and we're gonna call this S two. And we're basically gonna say uh, user. Actually, before we proceed, let's take a look at which user ID. Obviously, we could join the join in with the table, but uh, depends on what approach you want to take. So here, I see user ID five. So I look here. If I go user user ID equals in this case user ID is numeric, so I'm gonna go five, then export it. Perfect. So you'll see that all these were posted by the CFO. The next thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna create a couple different fields here and this will help to facilitate the extract. So I'm gonna call this Q1 variance. And I'm essentially gonna say, give me the uh, absolute value of the age between uh, the end of the year date or between the one of the first quarters. So let's just say, March 31st and uh, in this case the posted date so just give me the absolute value of that so you'll see 87 days between that and I'm gonna just double click and I'm gonna go to the very bottom I'm gonna append a couple of, of different fields together basically just a continuation on uh, let's go abs age in this case I'm gonna pick June 30th and post a date and I'm just gonna copy that I'm gonna append new field I'm gonna call this Q3 variance so you're gonna see a pattern for sure and I'm just gonna change this to 930 and we're going to append one more. We're going to call this Q4 variance. And we are going to paste this here. And we're going to pay, paste one more variable here. And we're going to call this Q min. Basically, what I'm going to look for is what is the minimum number of days so what which which quarter is it closest to so in this case we're going to do two mins here because mins you can only compare two and we're going to compare q1 variance to q2 variance and that result is going to get compared with you probably can guess it uh q3 variance and q4 variance oh, okay and this will give us the lowest of the four quarters So we're going to let that populate. So see here, zero versus one versus et cetera, et cetera. And now what we're going to do here is I'm going to create what we call S3. Oh, okay. I don't need this one. And I'm going to basically say um, Q, no, Q min is less than or equal to five, right? Within five days. And then I'm gonna say, and uh, in this case, account number is a numeric. I'm gonna say is greater than or equal to 4,000, which means that's an income statement item. Okay. And we're gonna paste that. So basically now we have our three results. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm simply gonna join, I'm gonna create a field in each of these. And I'm simply just gonna uh, join in the data and join in that one record. Uh, in this case, I'm gonna call it S1 flag. And it's simply just gonna be a character. Uh, in this case, length one, yes. And I'm going to do the same thing here and call it S2 flag. 
and it's going to be a character with one length and I'm going to say yes or why yeah why indicating yes and then here I'm going to call s3 flag I'm going to make this length one and I'm going to make it a yes oh in this case I need to make a character and I'm going to join in this this data here with the, each of those flags based off a of journal entry number. In this case, here, S1. Join it based off the journal entry ID. And the only field I want here is this S flag. Perfect. And then I want uh, all records in the primary, regardless if it's in the, uh, in the secondary or not, because I still want to maintain all the journal entries. So now here, I should have a new f file oh. that will contain some of these entries having the S flag. Perfect. Now I'm just going to keep, I'm going to basically repeat this. And you'll, bother, you'll see I'm not even bother really naming it, and I won't really bother naming it until I get to the very last table. Because these are really just temp temporary tables. Okay, perfect. All records in the primary. So now you'll see here I have S2 flags. Perfect. And this one I'm actually going to purposely name. And I'm going to, in this case, I only want the S3 flag. And then here I'm going to call this JE flags. All records in the primary. And now I'm going to just develop my score quickly. And basically what I'm going to do here is I'm going to create a field and I call the score. And the way I'm going to do this, and there's a number of ways that you could do this. I'm basically going to go if S1 flag equals yes, give a score three, otherwise give a score one plus and just going to repeat this three times s3 flag s2 flag and then now you'll see here we'll sort this in alphabetic order the highest score i can possibly given is nine the lowest score is three and then here you could do some sampling. You could do some like modified uh, weighted average sampling or weighted random sampling, uh, if that makes sense. And uh, you'll see here uh, how this can be a really useful technique. And I'd recommend probably testing all the ones above six because that indicates that there were more than two flags and then randomly sampling some from the one flags and then sampling a few from the ones with zero flags. So you can see here, if we look at this, there's 260 entries, which is not a lot, but you can imagine if this was factored by a thousand or even 10,000, which is, or even a hundred thousand, it's not totally inconceivable. You can see here, we've narrowed it down from one, at least one flag, 40 out of 260. That means 260 out of two, uh, 220 out of 260 have zero flags, which means that they're lower risk. So you can see how useful this technique is at really helping you identify which entries are important and which one you should be sampling for your journal entry testing. So if you have any questions, uh, please let me know. And I look forward to speaking to you next time. Thank you.